Okay, so on this cast, we're going to do the same thing with the buyback blister pull with an airlock on the end of it. Same thing, with some kind of a vacuum nylon to help draw air. Same thing, go ahead and tie this off somewhere on our anchor. Get rid of our waste. Make sure our lock sits on there nice. <clears throat> this socket we're going to do with just the lock on the end of it and no four hole connector. So after the fact, plastics on it, we have our socket, we'll be able to sand the end of it and use whatever type of connector we would prefer to use on the end of it, whether it be a four hole or a four prong, possibly a three prong. I want to put some glue on here to keep that holding still. It makes life a lot easier when it's not moving. We can really get a nice orientation now on this medial wall with our button. We brought it even a little more anterior to help them out. After a Vivax on here, to make our socket, we'll be able to sand the end and line it up either in a jig or on a bench, but we'll be doing a bench alignment with some type of a connector and a coyote glue glued onto the end of it. Okay, you can see that drawn around that lock. You don't even have to mess with the string or anything on it. It's sucking in just like it's supposed to. Okay, as soon as that cools, we'll cut it out. Either knock it off the cast, chip the cast out, whatever you like to do. We'll sand the end of it, rough it up. We'll take a connector, whatever your connector choice may be. We'll take coyote glue and glue a connector on the end of it. You can decide what kind of alignment you want, rotation, whatever the case may be. Got our tooling plug out. Now we need to rough up the bottom, get rid of some of the excess plastic. <clears throat> Roughen up the plastic before you glue on the Coyote Quick or whatever type of epoxy glue you're using. It's key to have that plastic roughed up, make sure it'll bond to it better. So I sand that down pretty good. There's a lot of bulk thickness to it. It doesn't change the strength value of it, so you might as well get rid of it. Uh, just almost sand it clear through to where the bottom of the pin uh, hole would be at. And now you have a place to glue on whatever type of connector you would like to put on and change whatever alignment you want to change right now. So we rough up the bottom or plastic best we can. It's up to you to determine what kind of a connector you want to glue to the bottom of this. We just grabbed up a four hole connector, put a lamination plate on the end of it. So when I put glue in here and set that on, it'll squish down into all these areas and really make a nice lock of a good holding point. Good for bench aligning. So we'll fill this thing up with Coyote Quick. Same same idea if you're using a three prong, four prong, whatever type of connector you're wanting to do in this type of application. Set that thing down in there, let it spooch around it real good.
it's set up good enough to actually be tacked. You still, no, I can't even move it anymore. It's already set up. It's not, not even close to being hard yet, but it's tacked up. We'll let that set up, <clears throat> fully cure. Then we'll take our screws out and our plate off the end and see how much of a good bond we have between the base of the socket and on our plate. So with this type of connector or any type of connector you're trying to glue on the end of this buyback socket, once you've got your initial tack on and it's stuck to the socket real well, you can go through after the fact and check it out to make sure you've got plenty of Coyote Quick, Epoxy, whatever you're using around your connector. In this case, the person wanted to, to make sure they had better surface adhesion, they could go through and gun a little bit here to help bridge this gap and then bring it back up over to where that ring is and do almost like a welding technique across this. So it looks more like this area right here where it's capturing, capturing this ring and it's also up on the back side of the ring this way so you're making a complete trap here, really holding that onto the socket. But it's good practice to come further up onto your plastic and down to your ring so you make a really super good bond. The last thing you want is for this to break off when you're testing somebody in a patient room walking on it.